David, as a follow-up question, in your previous uh, answer, you mentioned about purpose and values. But I also heard in a broadcast with Mark Stauber that you are not a fan of mission statement. So why? Why are you not a fan? I'm not a fan of them for a number of reasons. So number one, to me, a mission statement is something you aspire to be. Um, and, I, and I'm all about aspiring to be something, become more. But I don't think that is your rallying cry for your brand. I think your brand's rallying cry is a purpose statement. To me, a mission statement is something that's always a little bit outside of you. Um, now, that doesn't mean you can't capture those thoughts in you know, visuals and vision boards and all sorts of things like that. And yeah, 100%, put, put the future out in pictures. But to use that as your key driver, to me, is not an effective way to rally people. Second thing is most of them are usually very, very long-winded. Uh, they can be up to a paragraph and a lot of them include things like I joke when I say this, but there's some truth to it, you know, um, you know, I want to start a company to increase shareholder value through profitability while maintaining environmental standards. Like that's a mission statement. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty hard to emotionally get people wrapped around. Right. Yes. And so I'm not a fan of them. Um, I think that they, they, they're not emotional enough. They don't get to the core of why you exist. Uh, I think there's more creative ways to, to paint the future. Um, I call it the written compass where you can write out the future as like it's already accomplished. I think that's a better way. But just to have a mission statement as your overall rallying cry, too wordy, nobody remembers it, not emotional, nobody gets hooked. Yeah. Where a four-word purpose statement, you can hook people in, easy to remember. If it's easy to remember, it's easy to breathe life into. Yeah. Thank you again, David, for great uh, uh, enlightenment in that segment. But I also want to ask you that in your book, uh, you brought three great companies as an example, Nurse Next Door, Fully Managed, and Indochino. Why those three companies you mentioned in your book? Yeah, I mean, there were three companies, obviously, that I, I mean, two of them, them in particular, Nurse Next Door and Fully Managed, where I had a massive direct impact on their growth. Mm -hmm. um, You know, I spent five years at Nurse Next Door helping architect that brand. Uh, also owned four franchises as well. Um, you know, learned a ton from them, helped them in their growth. So they're a company that I think just from day one has gotten it right. And they're the benchmark for what I would say company culture is all about and who they surrounded themselves with, what they studied. So it was a significant part of my life. From there, I went on to become the chief strategy officer of Fully Managed and help take that company um, into a powerhouse company and, and multiple award winner in multiple provinces. And again, it was a great example of taking a lot of the things that we learned in a home care industry yeah. and applying them to an IT industry, two completely different industries, two completely yeah. different demographics. But again, demonstrating that if you have the basics of culture, yeah. you can grow it. Indochino is a brand I got to know um, that I really admired and, and the HR person at the time, Janet, I thought was terrific. Um, and, you know, just, just a good company that was on a, on a real growth curve yeah. and really just wanted to get better and really and still admired growing. Sort of their, still growing. Yeah. yeah I want, admired their business model and what they were doing and how they embraced culture and, um, you know, uh, how they took an online idea and, and really grew with it. So those are just, you know, three examples that I thought, um, Uh, were companies that were in their industries, uh, certainly leaders too, I had a massive impact on. And the third one I did some consulting for, but they were, they were just good examples of good corporate culture. Yeah, great. Uh, again, thank you, David, for sharing your knowledge. And for the audience, either listening or watching, do you have any favorite company culture that you think that would be great for people to watch it or check them out? Please leave it in the comment section and tune in tomorrow for another interview question with David.